Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video covers the E1 elimination mechanism. The E1 reaction is a reaction between an alkyl halide, which has a leaving group on the alpha position, and protons on at least one of the beta positions, and it goes through two steps. The first step, the slow step, involves the leaving group leaving. The leaving group leaves to give a carbocation intermediate. The carbocation intermediate then reacts in a second fast step with a weak base. Here, the base deprotonates the beta position, which gives a double bond between the alpha and the beta positions. The resulting product is an alkene that has a double bond between the alpha and beta carbons, along with a conjugate acid and the leaving group. The E1 mechanism is a two-step mechanism. The first step is the rate limiting step, the slow step. So the overall process depends only on the formation of the carbocation. Therefore, the reaction is first order or unimolecular only the alkyl halide participates in the rate limiting step and therefore the rate law for E1 is just dependent on the alkyl halide. It is K, the rate constant, times the concentration of alkyl halide and notice that the base doesn't figure into the rate equation. The energy changes involved in the E1 mechanism can be graphed and we'll do that on this slide. On the y-axis we have energy and on the x-axis we have reaction coordinate with units of time. We'll start off here with the starting materials and draw a line on the energy level diagram to indicate their position. The height on the energy level diagram indicates the energy of the reactants. In the first step, the carbocation forms, we can describe the energy of these intermediates with a line at this level indicating their higher in energy. As the leaving group leaves and it transitions to intermediates, we can draw the changes in energy that occur at that point. This reaction has a transition state that exists at the top of this hump and the carbocation is represented by the energy of this line. We can extend a reference line out from the starting materials and then measure the energy from the starting materials to the transition state. This is gonna be Ea sub one. This is the activation energy of the first step. In the second step of the reaction, the fast reaction, the base deprotonates the carbocation to give the alkene. That gives products which are represented by a line on the graph down here. As the base deprotonates the carbocation, we can draw the energy changes that are associated with that reaction. This reaction also has a transition state that exists at the top of the second peak. And again, we can draw a reference line out and measure the distance between the starting point, the carbocation, and measure the distance from the intermediates to the transition state. And that is E sub A2, which is the activation energy of the second step. Now, these two steps have different activation energies, which means they have different influences on the overall rate. The first step is by far the slower step because it has the higher activation energy. That's why in the E1 mechanism, the rate of the overall process depends just on the first step. It's the slow step. Once you form the intermediate carbocation, the second step, deprotonation is fast. We can also look at the energy differences between the starting materials and the products. If we draw another reference line out and measure the difference between the starting materials and products, that'll give us delta G. Delta G is the energy change, the free energy difference in the reaction. In this case, we have products that are lower in energy than starting materials, so products would be favored in this reaction. We could tell by how much if we know delta G and we could calculate equilibrium constants. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.